Okay. Um, let me... All right, Victor, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Janis. Thank you for having me. Um, hi and welcome, everybody. Um, it's great to see you all here. Um, I'm here to, um, to tell you something about uh, cluster business models. And um, it's, it's sometimes difficult to explain what, what clusters are. So I'll, I'll try to, to, um, to prevent too much uh, jargon in the cluster uh, world. I understand that there's possibly one cluster manager from Denmark uh, joining in. So he'll uh, be a, a little more familiar with the topic. Um, and like Janne said, we, we, we not, not just me, but I, I wrote a report together with Christian Ranga from Strategy Tools Norway on the subject. And um, the question is basically why we need to talk about cluster business models. Um, and that has to do with the fact that it's rather difficult for, um, uh, for clusters to, to find the right business model. There's a lot of um, uh, wheels that you can turn uh, uh, to, to find the right uh, business model. And I'll, I'll, I'll take you through a number of sets that we have been using uh, over these past uh, few months in, uh, in finding some of the business models. Um, and a little background um, for, from, from my part, I started as a cluster manager, innovation manager about six years ago in an organization called Health Valley Netherlands, which is basically a traditional life science and health cluster in the eastern part of the Netherlands. We've been around since 2006. We have some 220 partners from uh, government education, from uh, hospital universities and entrepreneurs. And basically we have three um, yeah, silos of industry that we're working on. We're working on personalized medicine. We're working on medical devices and robotics, and we're working on digital health. And those three have been historically the areas of, of industry in this uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the country. And when I started six years ago, um, I must admit that I had really not much experience in regional development, economic develop, development, uh, let alone that I, I knew exactly what a cluster was. I, I had experience from, from project management side, from business consultancy, from account management. And basically it was very logical to end up as a kind of a cluster manager because to me that kind of combines all these aspects of, um, of, of, of management type area. So it's, it's a bit account management for your partnership. It's a bit of project management for all the stuff that you're doing and the cluster management has to do with stakeholder management, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, it's a large network. And um, when I started the job, um, I, I, I drew my way out of what I was uh, um, coping with. So you see a, a nice picture. And this, this was also kind of hilarious when I, when I showed it to Christian in, in Norway. He said, oh, that, that looks like a first analog Miro board. And, and you all know how much we are in that digital uh, sense uh, working in a my report. Um, but a number of things you see here, Health Valley in the middle as, as organization, there's a lot of stuff going on on innovation product services, a public versus private uh, debate. There's some technology on IoT and food and big data. So all these, this stuff as I was, I was thinking about um, who am I dealing with that's in stakeholder uh, country? Who, uh, what is my financing structure? What is the area of expertise that we're using? You see some reference to uh, Horizon 2020. If you're familiar with EU funding schemes, you know that this is a large area of, um, of, um, of funding and, and possibilities of, of doing uh, pan-European projects with a lot of uh, funding that, uh, that you can get from Brussels if you find uh, the right calls and the right consortium partners to work with, for instance. Um, so this was, this was my first sketching out of, of the whole ecosystem that I found myself in. And um, like I said, uh, the standard for clusters has been for some 30 years, uh, the so-called triple helix. And um, um, Health Valley is no exception. We work with uh, medical institutes, we work with universities, and we work, we work with entrepreneurship. Um, and, and for us, there was also a, a kind of a, a, a fourth partner in there 
uh, specifically the healthcare organizations. So sometimes you also um, see this uh, model being mentioned as the quadruple helix. It, it all depends on what type um, of organization you're in or what, what region uh, of the world you're in. Um, and we did a lot of um, classic events um, in, in, in this classic structure. Um, and some of the events that we are doing, we're doing at least pre-COVID. Um, you see a picture here. And um, this is our annual um, um, event. It's called Health Valley Event. It's the largest life science and health event in the Netherlands. Um, and um, as I used this picture before, I, I was also asking, and what do you see actually on this picture? And um, what you basically see is like, a, like a, a standard, but also since COVID, a kind of outdated business model. Um, because as you know, we're not uh, coming together anymore. We don't have paying customers buying a ticket to come to a Cineplex uh, theater of uh, capacity 2000 and then talk all day or watch keynote uh, sessions, etc. That's all going online. So when this um, COVID lockdown in the Netherlands uh, struck, we basically also um, were reinventing uh, our own business model for Health Valley. Um, we were actually just in front of our um, uh, event in, in March 20, uh, 2020 when we canceled it because we we thought, yeah, we cannot run the risk of bringing uh, 14, 1500 people together with this unknown, had then unknown virus uh, lurking around. So um, we we needed to change something. We needed to uh, we needed to run different business models. And um, yeah, basically the question was how to deal with these um, type of uh, changes. And we ran, or at least I that was more or less the time that I ran into this, this uh, strategy toolkit uh, around superclusters. And I found one of the leading principles in here that we talk now about some sort of a paradigm shift in clusters where we, uh, like this picture is showing, we're moving from this traditional triple helix more into a kind of a pentagram model where we have capital and where we have entrepreneurship as extra uh, pillars to make it kind of a, a, a pentagram. And um, the main shift um, that's interesting here, and I'll also elaborate it on a, a little bit more, but the, the, the adding of entrepreneurship, and you should translate that maybe also in on, not only entrepreneurship as in startups and scale-ups, but also entrepreneurship being taught in business schools and being taught on uh, universities of uh, applied science. Um, why that's important, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment. And, and the influx of capital using uh, VC funding and using um, um, investments into those startups will help build um, the traditional triple helix cluster into uh, a super cluster. That's, that's, the, that's the underlying idea. And the entrepreneurship um, part and why that's important also has to do with building uh, a whole ecosystem in, um, in, 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 for instance, a region on, on this specific uh, topic like, like we have on healthcare. Um, because the entrepreneurship and the teaching of entrepreneurship in, in universities and in uh, universities of applied science will also help get you an influx of talent and, and help build um, uh, the, 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 the more or less the civic ecosystem in your region. And coming uh, from that uh, model, that pentagram model into uh, a business model, that takes uh, some time. And, and as you see here, this is one of the uh, worked out uh, business models that we have been using for, uh, for Health Valley ourselves. So um, you'll, you'll rec you recognize uh, uh, the, the, um, the, the traditional business model. It's, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's a ripoff, but it's, it's kind of a, a we've, we've added some stuff that's, that's specific to a cluster. And um, some part you see on the, on the lower right corner where um, a cluster is typically uh, dealing with funding from, from public money, from private money and from project money. And that's, that's uh, one of the, the differences that you see uh, um, um, as opposed to the, the, the classic model of, uh, of uh, Osterwald and Pinure. Um, 
So this is one of the examples that we've been working on in Health Valley ourselves. And um, what, what is key in, in building that cluster business model is, is maybe this triangle where you see ambition and strategy on the top, you see the business model and the financing, and you see structure and governance. And these three areas backed up by several canvases that you, you find in the toolkit will help you basically get started on building um, the first business models for your cluster. And it has to do with the fact that if you um, are able to define your cluster ambition and, and, and get a sense, get a narrative on what you're trying to achieve and create uh, together, um, you can also look for the strategic initiatives in the cluster and, and using these visual tools, um, you, 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 you more or less work your way around the business model and the financing of the cluster itself. And you can find um, also leading that into the structure and the governance model of, uh, of the cluster itself, because um, based on what you're defining your ambition and your strategy, that will also translate more or less into how you fill the structural role of your um, 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 of your of your board members, for instance, and 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 the, and the, the part of the project groups that you're running. Um, so this next one is where you see um, had the, the the areas of ambition and strategy backed up by um, by some of the canvases. You see the supercluster strategy canvas. Uh, on the lower right corner, you see the cluster financing model, for instance, and on the lower left corner, you see the supercluster structure. So all these areas um, are part of the tool kit and you can basically run your workshops with non members of the board or with, non with members of your, of your partnership and try to uh, fill the pieces and, and fill, the, fill the parts of the, of the puzzle to, uh, to start working on the business model. And um, the, the impact that you're trying to create with your cluster business model, um, that always runs over a long period of time. Um, that's what I also like so very much about these visual type of tool sets. It's more or less um, um, very essential that you, that you start creating these type of artifacts and that you are able to to run these um, uh, workshop but but also create a, create the visual workshop tool set and then the tools can go on the wall and you create some sort of a project war room where people can walk in and see where you're coming from and where you're going i i find that very um yeah more or less essential in in, in using these uh, these tools how, how are we running with time, uh, Janis? Are we okay still? Yeah, yeah, we're okay. But uh, as in the past, uh, if anybody wants to ask a question, you can also write in the chat or uh, just raise your hand. Uh, but uh, okay. 10 more minutes. Uh, Perfect. But yeah, we, we still have time also for questions. Because okay. So far, so good. So adding some more on um, on, on the workshops. Um, this next one is 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 are some pictures of also again pre-COVID what we what we used to run in um, in in this region. Um, very important to get different stakeholders involved and get them into a room and make sure that they're aligned and comfortable with the visual aspects of this project and then basically uh, run with the workshop. And here. Um, we were actually at the beginning, we were running a, a simulation on superclusters with a number of people in the room. There's, there's uh, municipality uh, people, there are people from the regional uh, development agency, and uh, there are also people from the educational uh, side. And we, we ran this workshop and, and, and tied it in into uh, using different uh, tool sets and different aspects of the whole, um, of the whole system more or less to say um, and when we um, we started these um, these reports and when we started working on it and we, we like I said it's not just me and Christian that wrote it but we actually um, worked on a number of case studies that we that we drew in from from uh, from the whole world basically um, we had a very interesting case study from uh, from Australia on, on a robotics cluster. There was an aero cluster from Mexico 
um, uh, an, an, uh, a construction uh, cluster from Slovenia. And we've, we've added these uh, case studies in the report also to show how they have used the tool set to make different business models and how also, for instance, very specific in the case of the construction cluster of Slovenia, we see how their uh, business model has, has changed and evolved over um, uh, the existence of the cluster. So for, 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 for more than 10 years, how it's been running. Um, and clusters, um, it's not only um, um, a matter of, um, of maturity of the cluster here, we, we often distinguish emerging clusters, growing clusters, and super clusters has to do with the time span of the cluster, the number of uh, uh, partnerships that they have, or uh, the number of, uh, of years running. Um, but it also has to do, uh, the business model for us also has to do with different levels of, of where, uh, where the cluster is in its, in its business model. So looking at how a cluster is financed, I've, also briefly touched on it in the, in the business model itself, uh, the division between public and private money and project money, um, sp uh, specifically the cost structure of the cluster. Uh, some, some of the clusters that we've met are running uh, very tight budgets, uh, very small uh, uh, sets. Uh, some clusters are a little more advanced. Uh, uh, Health Valley itself has seven people working in the office, but there, there's all, there are also clusters uh, uh, with 20 or 30 uh, people working there. Um, and and, and, the, and the, the, the other level that we're looking at is basically how the um, cluster is creating impact. So um, the value impact of the companies and, and, the, and, the, and the industry more or less that you're trying to, to change with your cluster, that is also a measurement that you can really use in, in, in building on the business model because there are a lot of activities and a lot of options for, uh, for cluster business models to be uh, evolved. Eh? There's, there's training programs, public funding, capital fundraising, et cetera, et cetera. So in the tool set, you'll find all these possibilities to help you sketch out your, uh, your own business model. Um, and this is running from very classic to very eccentric. Um, and again, thinking of the five-point uh, pentagram, you can you can have more emphasis on um, running your startups through accelerator programs, for instance, trying to uh, do a fast track to IPO, versus um, a, a kind of a classic uh, program where you offer, uh, or maybe you're running much more on public funding from a regional or a national uh, level. That's that's more or less sometimes the classic way of, uh, of financing uh, the model. Um, and one of the interesting um, uh, people I talked to recently was uh, actually somebody from, uh, from Switzerland uh, this morning who was really looking from the, uh, from the entrepreneurship side of, of how to get startups and, and scale-ups in his system and help them evolve with the help of university uh, um, funded research in bringing specific solutions to uh, to the market. So like I said, there's a number of, of, of canvases in the model that you that you can use. Um, and, and if you are starting on uh, this business model working in the cluster, it's essential that you are talking to the board. If there's a board active in um, in your cluster, it's essential that you um, that you get them uh, literally on board of this uh, initiative. Because um, we found that a lot of uh, the boards active in clusters that sometimes we talk to um, are not that familiar with developing the business model for the specific cluster. So you will have to bring them in in, in how you can work on that. And one of the examples that that uh, um, that is mentioned as a case study in the report is is the Queensland Robotics cluster. And Andrew, uh, we've talked to him uh, several times. He is actually working very specifically on seed and capital funding as a, as a part of his, of his financing model in, um, in the cluster itself. So what we find, some of the key insights in, in the report while we were writing is that, it, that there's a number of levels of cluster business model managing. Um, basically from, from just uh, the, the, the start of understanding what is the cluster business model, how is it built up, 
um, to map, optimize, evolve, and compete. Mapping out eh, when you first start working on some of these tool sets that you're looking into um, the ambition set, for instance, of your cluster. If you're looking into uh, the financing, the cost, and the, and the, and the, and, the, and the rewards of um, of your financing model, um, moving slowly towards optimizing uh, the system, and then. Very rarely you see uh, clusters reaching the, the fifth uh, and the fourth stage of, of where they um, are really active in using the models and they, they, they sketch out the, the ideas and they can really start competing um, as, as part of, um, of, um, of, the, of the business model. Because um, there are basically a number of levels of, um, of how people are working with the uh, uh, with clusters, there's, there's kind of a basic introduction level where, where people are aware of, of the three types of clusters, the emerging, the growing, and the super clusters. And then by using um, tools as strategy, as a strategy map or the fundamentals map, where you, where you sketch out the basic building blocks of a, of a cluster, they, they get more of a grasp of what the super cluster can be, yeah? the, the super cluster where where the cluster has already moved from the triple helix into the pentagram model to level three, where you actually start building the super cluster. And that means that you get your stakeholders in a room, that you, that you uh, make, a, um, make a call on the, on the thematic issues that you're trying to, um, to launch in the, um, in the cluster itself. And then you start working on your strategy and you start working on the structure uh, model or the governance model of the, of the cluster itself. So, Victor. Yeah. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, I think can we take a question or two? Yeah, sure. Of course. I was I was almost done. I was just looking at uh, uh, the last slide, um, giving you the. That's uh, good. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll share the links also the uh, for those who uh, couldn't join. Um, do you, Martin has already asked. Uh, perhaps you can answer very briefly uh, if you can combine clusters, uh, like a robotics cluster working together with an IT cluster or something like that? Um, yes, very well possible. Um, most of the times what you what you see, and this is also why it's so interesting to, to make a connection between the cluster development um, and, and, and the business ecosystem, for instance, you could, you could link several adjacent industries or technologies and, and, and build on um, on, on reinforcing uh, technologies that, that that benefit both of the uh, clusters, uh, for instance. So um, at a robotics and an IT cluster combined sounds like a rather good match. Um, but again, I think it it could be that the the, the they are two separate clusters. But I think sure. if you're looking at these emerging technologies. It, it most likely will be that there is a number of companies within the same cluster already working together. So, Claudia, you raised your hand. Um, yes, uh, I, I have another question, <laughs> Victor. What is uh, when when you think about the work you've done uh, with the Health Valley? What what is the greatest challenge uh, that you faced in building a cluster? Greatest challenge. Um, 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 I think it's, it's the greatest challenge still has to do with the funding of the of the clusters itself. Um, it's really hard getting away from the uh, from the public funding uh, IV, so to speak. And most clusters will get a little push from the government saying, "Okay, this is important. Here's some some uh, some public funding," and then you'll get five to 10 years to build your own sustainable model. And that's really hard. Moving away from the public funding into the private funding and, and, and into project funding, I, I would say that that is the hardest part of, uh, of cluster uh, development. Yeah. All right. And then uh, Rasmus uh, asked, uh, I'll share the recording as well uh, when we're done. Michael has a question on experiences yeah. with cluster, cluster innovation. innovation, overlapping open innovation. Um, really briefly, um, the end stage had the most uh, sublime part of the supercluster is open innovation. If you are able to succeed in building that supercluster, 
it can only work if you have built enough on the trust for all the stakeholders involved to really engage in open innovation. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, maybe that, maybe we should call that the holy grail or whatever, but that, I think that is in, 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 in essence, the, the, the end game of, uh, of, of, the, of the major supercluster. If, if you have built up enough uh, trust on that. Yeah. Bingo. And on that note, I would say we made it just on time. Woo. Thank you, Victor. Uh, and you win also on the best uh, Teams background I've seen in a long time with the post-it <laughs> notes there. That looks really good. Uh, I'll share the recording, the slides, the report link and the notes. And I know Victor also is very happy uh, for anybody to continue the conversation. Yeah. But for now, I would say thank you for opening uh, our eyes a little bit to how clusters work behind the scenes and for sharing your quite impressive work. Thank you so much, Victor. Thanks for having me, Anis. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.